Hey everybody, welcome in. It is a Thursday, and Thursday is always a fun day. But you know what's even more fun is when you see all your top names. I have a long list of all my top cryptos and equities. It's about over 120 names. And at the very top, it's Matic, CleanSpark, Engine, Ethereum, Solana, Polkadot, Elrond. And they are all the names that are top performers today. So very refreshing to see. Anyway, let's jump in and have a look at what's going on in this crazy market. Uh, as usual, this is edutainment, not financial advice, of course, by no stretch. And the channel is about math, money and freedom. So first of all, let's jump in and look at exactly what's going on in the market. Here, everything benchmarked against Bitcoin, because what's the point in using fiat anymore? We'll talk more about fiat later. But you can see dark green, Doge, and dark red, Shib. The manipulation has moved from Shiba Inu to Dogecoin. So be careful out there. Um, if you have any profits, take them and put it into a pristine asset. That's what I've been urging people to do. Uh, other stuff that's green, BNB, Solana, XRP even, and Ethereum. And Matic, dark green, well, darker green. So all around crazy good day, but some we'll talk more about some of the big moves as well. But let's talk about the flash crash. Did you have your limit orders ready? Told you yesterday. And here it is again. So we had a Bitcoin flash crash. Bitcoin actually moved $6,200 in 80 minutes. It wicked down a very rapid $3,500. And if you had a limit order in place on FTX, you got a hit. So always have those limit orders, even for a small amount of money, like 57,100 or 56,100, 55,100, because you will get lucky. I guarantee you in any given month, you're going to get a hit. And that is the beauty of Bitcoin. Remember, these things happen in seconds. It's just manipulation. And the volatility is the defining characteristic of cryptocurrency. So buckle in, I always say, wear your seatbelt, but it's fun if you know how to play it. Let's look at a tech dev's chart of the day. Uh, he has jumped on the Fidelity bandwagon where they compared the performance of Bitcoin between 19, or of gold, sorry, between 1970 and 1979 to Bitcoin. And this is eerie how similar it is. Now, if it continues on this trajectory and continues to map, the movement since the beginning over the last nine years, we could hit a $300,000 Bitcoin. So anyway, that's from TechDev, which is pretty cool. Now, another indicator that we haven't spoken about in a long time, but it's back on the radar. This is the Dixie. Now, this might look like a bit of an eye chart, so I'm going to walk through it slowly. And it's kind of my interpretation of exactly how this all works together. So first of all, the very top is the Dixie, which is the dollar currency index. And the bottom is Bitcoin. Now, green means up, red means down, and you can see the inverse correlation. So historically, when the Dixie was going down, Bitcoin was typically going up. So when the dollar is weak, Bitcoin is strong and vice versa. So I tried to map in the last 12 months in these big arrows to show you exactly how it is correlated. But it got a bit messy over the last four or five months. And you can see there a little bit confusion. And we also saw the Dixie hit a new kind of all time high around 95 ish for a while. Very strong dollar. And that's representative of a lot of the other currencies being very, very weak. So but the key thing here is this could trigger a nice rally. Now, I have two lines in there as well. As usual, I got my blue line and my red line. The red line is a 50 day moving average. The blue is a 200 day. You can see the Dixie is right on the cusp of that 50 day moving average. If it crashes through that, it could be a bully signal for Bitcoin. And historically, a big rally for Bitcoin has been triggered by a big weakness in the dollar. Again, money moves to safety. Safety is Bitcoin. People move their fiat to Bitcoin, which is what I did yesterday and a little bit today as well. So I consider that my new money market account. So uh, that is the Dixie news. Enjoy, and we'll see if we break through that 50 day moving average. Now let's talk a bit about math and Bitcoin denomination. This was beautiful, and I'm a big fan of Nayib Bukele. I think he's a very brave and courageous president. He's doing great things in El Salvador, 
Anybody who got their Bitcoin, the 30 bucks and their Shivo key has now doubled their money. That's now worth 60 US dollars. So talk about hyperinflation against Bitcoin. That's exactly what's going on. But this is really cool. Is how do we make a profit if one Bitcoin equals one Bitcoin? So not really making a profit. So he's already wrapping his head around denominating everything in Bitcoin. Now they do say they have a trust fund counted in USD, but the trust is funded by both USD and Bitcoin. So what they can do, which is really, really cool, when the Bitcoin part revalues in comparison to the accounting currency USD, they're able to withdraw dollars and leave the trust with the same total. What that basically means is as Bitcoin goes up in value, the fund will go up in value and they can peel off the dollars in their treasury and use them for other purposes. And the fund remains the same. So that's the power of keeping your money in a pristine asset. So well done, Naib. I love that tweet. Super simple and beautiful. Now, not everything is unicorns and rainbows. Sam Beckman fried was on CNBC, I think, some TV show. I can't remember, but he was being interviewed. I think it was a market watch. And the he did express some concern. Obviously, he is the richest 29-year-old on planet Earth, thanks to FTX. And he said his biggest concern right now, what keeps him awake at night, is a potential series of events. A daisy chain of massive liquidations, big risk ca cascade, a big crash, and again, multiple additional liquidations. And that could bring about a very heavy rulemaking regulatory platform that could crush the crypto system. So that is his big concern. I thought I'd share it with you because that was interesting to see, especially with his business and what he's on the forefront of. He kind of gets a feel for what could go wrong. But anyway, be wary of that down the line. Now, in terms of more fiat news, another fiat currency bites the dust. Turkey. Uh, I feel bad for anybody who owns the Turkish lira, but it's lost at least 20% so far this year against the US dollar. And the US dollar has been hyperinflating against the Bitcoin. So um, you can see, obviously, if you look at the history of lira against Bitcoin, it is a stunning graphic. But the key message here is not only has President Erdogan tried to ban Bitcoin and ban the people from protecting themselves and hedging against becoming poor, absolute debasement, uh, that hasn't worked. Banning Bitcoin hasn't worked, and it also hasn't saved the currency. So not only has the currency tanked, but also has Erdogan's stock, his reputation as president. He's become very, very unpopular. So not good to be good. a ruthless dictator in Turkey right now. So we'll see where it all goes. Anyway, it's not the only currency that's going to hit the wall. Speaking of the fiat standard, this book was brilliant. And Safin uh, put it together. I tweeted him today. And there was a cool a couple of cool things in there in this particular book. And a big thank you as well to Sanjay for putting this on my radar. But he talks about four different factors around fiat. Uh, basically, one of them is it's unquantifiable. And nobody knows exactly how much fiat exists. And nobody knows how much has been printed, where it is, how many coins, how much supply, etc. It is just random and they just keep on printing like all the money that was left in Afghanistan. And they have a thing called M0, which usually gives the number of fiat tokens that have been printed into physical paper, notes, coins, etc. that are in circulation, but nobody really knows. It's irreconcilable. It is also negative. It's tentative. It's revocable. And the whole book is really about how we are all slaves to fiat. So... The fiat standard, the debt slavery alternative to human civilization. Again, big message here in this book is Bitcoin fixes a lot of these problems. But now the world is beginning to realize how bad it actually is, especially the damage that money printing does to individuals and their life savings. So moving on from that, let's talk a little bit more about more fiat currency. This is hilarious. The e-Naira launched in Nigeria yesterday. And uh, the big campaign is it gives you more possibilities more possibilities, my, uh-uh, nope. And guess what happened as well? Uh, the, if we look, uh, there it is, the search terms for Bitcoin. Number one in the world is Nigeria. So <laughs> what's is basically what typically happens here, it's, it's uncanny. Once people launch these central bank digital currencies, there's a huge scramble to move towards Bitcoin for safety. Nobody wants to be under the thumb. And that's why I always say the more CBDCs they launch, the more... 
Bitcoin will perform. It's a flight to safety, not just here, but everywhere else. Now, speaking of that as well, let's go back one slide, one second. Coinbase is now the number one application on the App Store. Now, this is extremely bullish. Despite all the outages, more people are signing up than ever before. Everybody is wants to get a piece of crypto right now. Everybody knows it's hot and there's a big movement towards that. So that's going to be great for Coinbase earnings. It's also great for the business, but the performance of the platform yesterday is terrible. Coinbase Pro was not working for me yesterday around 5 p.m. when I was trying to buy more Solana. So, but I always have my backup exchanges. Thank you, FTX, for always being working and being up and running. Now, let's talk about retail FOMO, obviously, because the App Store is so hot. Are we seeing retail FOMO yet? So according to Google Trends, no, this is a five-year chart. We are nowhere near FOMO times for Bitcoin, which is good news. But let's see what else is going on in the world. Now, ETF for Ethereum. Big question. Could there be one? Could it, it, will it be a futures ETF? Yes, it probably will. When's it going to hit the market? We're not sure, but probably the first half of 2022. And uh, this is per Bloomberg Intelligence, and they've been pretty good. Their analysts are really good about estimating when the ETFs are coming. They were spot on for the futures ETF for Bitcoin. So they believe this could happen uh, sometime first half, first six months of 2022. And what they also said, most importantly, it will be before a Bitcoin spot ETF. And again, they're normally right. So those of you who are holding out for a conversion of GBTC to an ETF before the end of the year, no, looks like it'll be next year. Um, but the Ethereum ETF could hit first. And that's kind of interesting because um, Gensler, he's okay with Ethereum, but not as much of a fan as he is of Bitcoin. So we'll track that very carefully. Now, speaking of Ethereum as well, some extremely bullish news. Options traders are expecting an all new all-time high on Friday. And if you look at the chart right now, it is so strong. I mean, today, Bitcoin is up like $350, which is 9%. Think of that, 9% in a day for an asset that is half a trillion dollars. That is a big move. Now, looking at this chart here again, the pink are... Uh, bearish positions, which are put options, and the green are call options. And you can see a big, huge spike of call options at the $5,000 strike. And then another big one at 8,000. Of course, 8,000 is going to hit, but 5,000 could hit by Friday. And a lot of people are betting on that. And I think 55% of bulls place their bet on Ethereum being $4,500 or higher. And we're now 4270 So uh, it could very easily happen by October 29th. So watch that carefully. And also, not only are the options traders bullish on Ethereum hitting 5,000, but so is Mike McGlone. Again, speaking of Bloomberg, Mike McGlone says we are in a clear bull market for Ethereum. And he is very bullish and he believes there will be that ETF next year as well. So nothing but goodness for Ethereum. Or is there some cloud on the horizon? Let's see. Well. Cream Finance, the Ethereum-based lending protocol, suffered yet another hack. This time was a flash loan, and they cleaned them out of $130 million of assets, which is the biggest ever hack that I know of. So everybody, the big message here is Ethereum is not perfect. DeFi plays are not perfect. They're not secure. So be careful. Be careful which ones you use. Only use the biggest and the best and the most secure to make sure your assets are safe. So watch that. And in other news, let's look at the chart for Ethereum. Ethereum is up 63% in 36 days. As you guys know, I like to look at patterns and numbers, and I saw 63% in 36 days. I was like, whoa, that was kind of interesting. So it's been up huge and going from strength to strength. And again, maybe Raul Paul and his prediction is going to come true. Could we see $10,000 by the end of this bull run? The way it's moving right now, very probable. Now, another little related Ethereum Bitcoin news. Uh, my old alma mater, where I went to school and have a master's in finance, is now accepting Bitcoin and Ethereum for payment. So that is interesting. Obviously, it is a top or the top finance school on earth. Some people from London School of Economics may argue that, but if you look at rankings and ratings, that's not the case. It's the case. And uh, it is the first American university to accept 
crypto as payment. So the question is, drop in a comment below, if you were going to get a master's degree or something, would you pay in Bitcoin or would you pay in fiat? I think I know the answer. <laughs> we'll see. Anyway, let's talk about another huge bonkers move. Everybody, number three smart contract platform per us. And I've been banging the drums on this for the longest time. It's really beginning to move. It's done a 2x in 30 days. So it went from a dollar four cents up to two dollars and eight cents right now. And it's showing tremendous trends. So it's always nice to see the fact that the world wakes up to the intrinsic value of Polygon as we go forward. And they are going from strength to strength themselves. So uh, that's good. Some good Polygon news. Now, this is interesting as well. The makeup of what people invest in. So this is a cool report. Uh, 40,000 individuals across 22 countries noticed that 26.4% of Australian crypto holders own Cardano. So if you're watching this and you're from Australia, let me know below. And let me know what your plans are, because if you listen to this channel, you may not be holding Cardano. Uh, and Dogecoin remains a US bet. So this tells me the Australians are kind of more conservative with their investing, which is good. Cardano is a safe place to park money. And the US may be a more speculative in nature, looking for that fast win, quick buck. Now you see the move with Shiba Inu and Doge and all that stuff. But just to remind you all, that is pure gambling. There is nothing behind these tokens but manipulation and pumping. Nothing at all. And three, four years from now, they won't even exist. So just be careful where you do. Now let's talk about Tesla for a second. I was surprised yesterday how many people loved my Gamma Squeeze video. A little bit uh, technical, but it's what's going on. Now this stock, uh, I've been a Tesla bull. You're probably sick of me talking about them, about how undervalued it was all year, how their earnings are growing and how they're crushing every car company on earth. The Toyotas, the Volkswagens, the Fords and General Motors, they are just crushing everybody. But we had, we just went through a week with an avalanche of the most amazing news. So first of all, um, they had crushing earnings. Second of all, a huge 100,000 car order from Hertz. Then Hertz updated it to maybe 200,000 cars. Now they're going to partner with Uber on something like a 50,000 Tesla rideshare program for their network in 2023. Again, this could be the first foray into the robo taxi service. And it's gone up another record amount. But I still believe, you know, I shorted it at $1,100. I don't believe it's going over 1300 And that's why I'm in a very big short position. And I'm willing to wait three to six months to get out of it and buy, buy those short calls back on a dip. But that is kind of my game plan. But when you look at the stats here, I don't know if this is visible to you all. If you look at the right hand side, you will see obviously the yellow spike in stock price and versus the S&P 500 and the amount of call options that are purchased just in, and this was, uh, I think this is from Bloomberg today, but the amount of call options that were pur purchased over the last few days is crazy. And that's why we have the gamma squeeze because the market makers need to catch up, which we covered yesterday. So check that video yesterday if you want to find out more. But Tesla's a beast. However, even at this $1,100 price, I still think it's run a little bit too far too fast. Uh, Kathy Wood did sell a little bit of Tesla. She's a huge bull, but she has to sell as well, just so you all know, to rebalance her portfolio. She can't have any more than 10% of her portfolio in one stock. And after such an exponential move, they have to rebalance. And that's why she sold a little bit today. Anyway, in um, other news as well, Google is up 3x in 18 months. Again, I'm a big Google bull, but this is just a money-making machine. They haven't even turned on their full monetization. They're coming out with new features that will help uh, do much better advertising with what they call a multitask unified model, which will enable them to capture even higher ad revenue. Things like YouTube, like you're watching me on, it's just, you know, in itself, it's apparently a trillion dollar business. And soon there'll be options for buying anything you find on the internet with the help of Google. They're going to integrate anything you see with the Google wallet. And this could become the biggest Visa or MasterCard operation in the world, especially if they integrate crypto. So watch this space. I know many of you have been asking, uh, when do we get into Google? When do we buy? Um, I wouldn't buy it above 2,500, but it just got really close a few days ago where the little blue arrow is. So uh, watch for dips and then layer into the position. 
not financial advice, but this is a company that will continue to dominate the next 10 years. Very bullish on. Now, speaking of another fun company, who cares? Facebook, in their last gasp to try and survive, they know, you know, subscribership, membership, whatever they call it at Facebook is falling. So let's try reinvent ourselves real quick before the whole business dies. Well done, Mark. Yeah. Okay. That's about 10 seconds of Facebook, a little more than we need, but they changed the name. Anyway, looking to a little bit of bad news as well to finish up. Uh, here we see the economy grinding to a halt. Now, after a pretty okay recovery uh, since March 2020, we all know what happened then. We had a big bounce, but going from minus 25% to plus 20% is very easy to do because everything literally stopped overnight. Now we're in a situation where things are really grinding to a halt again. So we have huge supply chain issues. Uh, Delta wasn't as bad as people thought and it's kind of behind us. Um, but now the shelves are empty and this is the slowest GDP gain since March, second quarter 2020, which is not good. And uh, it tells me that this could bring about more stimulus to help get the economy back, which means more money printing. If they start increasing interest rates and if they start stopping money printing, this will really drive GBT, GDP negative and no politician wants that. So as I say, all roads lead to Bitcoin. There'll be more money printing. They can't stop. They paint into a box. So hope you like this content. I'm going to open up some Q&A right now and uh, change my camera. So let me see where you guys are at. Okay. Um, slightly. Can <clears throat> Didn't just need to get some water. Give me a second. I'll pull up these questions. Now I can talk again. Sorry about that, guys. Luke, good to see you, buddy. You're always first. You need a gold medal for me first. What are your largest disagreements um, with both Sailor and Breedlove's unique visions on crypto, Bitcoin, ETH, tech adoption, and why? Well... Breedlove, I'm very much aligned with. Uh, he might be a little bit extreme in a few areas, but net net, uh, almost violent agreement. But his view of the world can be very, a little bit stronger than mine. I do believe, you know, the world isn't going to go to pot, and you know, fiat currency isn't going to crash entirely. I think it's more of a gradual movement in that direction. And in terms of sailor, um, uh, it, it was a little bit surprising to me when. He was surprised when he looked at my deflationary model for Bitcoin, coins lost, and the fact that they continue to be lost every single year. And looking at the final number, then the year 2045 or 2048, we may have less than 10 million Bitcoin out there in the market. That, I think, surprised him. But net net, um, Sailor and I, we also agree <laughs> very much on everything. And to be honest, I really enjoyed both these interviews. And I hope I was able to pry something unique out of them that, because they do so many interviews, uh, I always try and find a different angle and a big thank you as well to the community to help because all of your input, all of your questions that come to me uh, percolate in my little head and put it back out to them. So thank you for that. Artem from Canada, where do you see Solana if ETH gets to 8,900 and 10,000? So if that happens, Solana will go to 450. And if ETH goes to, I think about 14,000, Solana goes to 750. They're kind of the rough numbers right now. Um, they could even go faster if it moves faster. And we'll see a lot of Solana is staked. There's not a lot of supply out there for a similar situation, but not as bad um, as the Ethereum lockup. Solana just has so much uh, staked right now. Big Duck Kiwi, could I borrow with Celsius to buy one Bitcoin? Well, it depends what you put up as collateral. Um, you need collateral to be able to borrow, and that collateral can take any form of crypto. But technically, uh, I did borrow against my Bitcoin, and I put the money into the market again. So um, you shouldn't do that, though. Never borrow to speculate. I did it kind of as a, as a test to see how it would all work. 
uh, in preparation for the video I did with Alex. But I do not recommend that. That is not financial advice. Uh, Flying Albatross 13. Should we buy Phantom? Phantom was a little bit weak today. I've been looking at it and I haven't managed to prove to myself that it is better or safer than, uh, than Solana. However, it is growing faster. And on a market cap basis, the amount of TVL locked is extremely impressive. The development uh, I am digging into right now. But I think if you want, yes, I would say so far, I haven't seen any red flags. It is purely a speculative asset. It's growing really quickly. And that's what's really impressed me the most. When I first looked at Phantom three or four months ago, it was this big. Now it's 10x the size. So the rate of growth has just blown me away. Jonathan Block, uh, do you ever end up buying Voyager or looking into it? Uh, yeah, looked into it, didn't buy it. Again, I tend to go in heavy on a few names. So like on my equities, I'm all in on Google and Square, MicroStrategy and Tesla. And I don't have room for things like Voyager. I want really big, solid names with very little risk. And the same thing with um, my cryptos. Uh, my top three holdings are Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana, and then 3% of my portfolio is the rest. So I didn't uh, go into them at all. I did look at Voyager. I like the amount of Bitcoin they have in their balance sheet. But uh, we'll see. I know Galaxy was on fire today. So was Voyager. So, um, but yeah, I just, I have no room in my stable. And I always want to be focused on less names and go in hard. And uh, proven to be right so far. So we'll see. Again, I just tend to be more risk averse. Jose Morales, uh, how does Polka market perform on your compendium? It's probably not good. And I don't even know it's if it's in it let me have a quick look i uh, haven't been asked one of these polka mark anything with a knockoff name of something else normally is crap so um be very careful um let me see you know it's rank 643 it's not in the compendium i only do the top 300 sorry about that jose morales um yeah and i can tell you by looking at it it's not going to do well. Tokenomics are crap. Inflation is high. No, wouldn't touch it. Uh, like, why Why mess with this stuff <laughs> when you could just buy Ethereum or Solana? If you just want to double X, three X your money, just buy those. I mean, I, uh, there'll come a time, everybody, at the end of this cycle, everybody's going to dump all the crap and move towards a solid place. That's just how it always works. Crypto Creed. I'm 35 years old from New Jersey, living in rental and planning to buy a house. Current real estate price is at an all-time high. Do you recommend to wait for market to cool down or buy now? Also, do you prefer Luna over Tezos? So Luna is kind of like a, because it's a stable coin play. It's not really a smart contract platform. And Tezos, I don't like. So <laughs> there's your answer. Again, of the top 20, there's better out there. Um, like just by Matic. Matic is far superior to both Luna and Tezos, in my opinion, based on our models. That's all I can say. Now, in terms of real estate, uh, congratulations on trying to buy a place. Real estate always goes up in value. If it ever blips, it's always for a short window of time. But the best time to always buy real estate is between Thanksgiving and the third week of January. So that's when you find people who are desperate to sell. They've got to move. They've got to get out. They've got to make money. That's when you can jump in and snipe a property cheap. So look for something that's run down with crappy bathrooms, crappy kitchen, you know, maybe garbage in the yard. Fixer upper. It's very easy to fix up houses at very low cost, especially if you're willing, willing to do some work yourself. And you're a young guy, so you can. Uh, so just keep your eye out. Build a profile of what you're looking for. Use Zillow or Redfin and get ready to snipe and be aggressive. Find about five or 10 places and do low bid offers like a fifty, dollars $100,000 under asking and you'll get a fill. That's the way we buy crypto. Uh, D to crypto. Uh, how are you predicting when the cycle will end for Bitcoin? I'm trying to understand when cycles start and stop for Bitcoin and how we determine this. So I have a, a list of 20 different indicators that I use. I did a video on it, my top 20 Bitcoin indicators. I will link to it after this and I'll share it in the description below. 
And that's what I use to identify tops. But I think the cycle is very different. It's very different makeup of the people that are buying the Bitcoin, holding the Bitcoin. There's still some manipulation, but there's a lot of big money coming in and they are hodling. They're looking for a medium to long-term inflation hedge. They're not looking to speculate. And they're moving 5%, 10%, 20% of their assets into things like Bitcoin. So um, we'll see. But I, I see the end not happening till at least March of next year, maybe even further. But if we just explode upwards, who knows? Uh, that could happen sooner. I much prefer a more gradual climb up. And as we saw with some of the volatility today, I mean, a $6,200 move in 80 minutes, the volatility is still here, but use that to uh, build up positions. And everybody, please, it's good to take profits on garbage, but don't rush to take profits on the pristine asset. Uh, it could turn out 20% chances. I always say that everybody moves into Bitcoin and moves out of everything else. It is a flight to safety. And if it does, if the supply completely gets depleted, if big money starts coming in and buying it up fast, and if you sell too early, you might not be able to get back in. So just always always keep that in the back of your head. Uh, Jim Steck, can you please comment on the value of alchemy? I did. I had a look at it. Didn't like it at all. Uh, somebody asked me to analyze that a while ago, and I went into it three times. No, uh, not a good investment. Again, Everybody, I am extremely particular with what I put my money in. Extremely particular. Like, you know, I do a lot of due diligence and it's got to be perfect before I put my money at risk. And even if you look at all the mining stocks, um, I always say mining is a cutthroat business. But when I found things like CleanSpark, wow, that was just uh, super good value. And it's gone up really well. So... I do invest in everything, but it's got to be squeaky clean and it has to have a lot of upside. And alchemy, I did not like. Dragon Rider, could you please dedicate time to helping us understand financial market interrelationships with each other? Yeah, that's where I try and weave a lot of stuff in as to how things work. Um, for example, crypto and markets and macro and equity and interest rates and dollar indexes and money printing all over the world. Everything is becoming more and more interrelated. And even if you look at like Shiba Inu and Doge. Those two things are interrelated. They're inversely correlated. One tanks, the other one goes up and vice versa. Like literally, it's as if the same manipulators are, are playing both sides of the same fence. Uh, so that's the way you really need to do that. So I, I'll, I'll try to uh, do more of that. It's a very good point. But I spend a lot of time talking about macro and central bank digital currencies and fiat problems and interest rates and dollar indexes. Uh, because it is critical to the crypto space and also the equity space. And remember, you can make as much money or more in equities than you can in crypto. So remember that. Uh, future millionaire, since you're bullish on Solana and it being my biggest holding, do you suggest we sell this bull run or possibly hold for the next bull run? Possibly hold. It depends on how much adoption, how big it goes. Um, but imagine, imagine you have some Solana at 20 bucks and it goes to 500 Please take your original 20 bucks investment off the table. If you bought a thousand tokens at 20 bucks, take your money off and let the rest roll. So I do recommend that at least or else layer out if you find better assets, better investments. But we're going to be tracking that very carefully. Uh, if any type of growth slows in terms of you know, TVL metrics or adoption or if there's any Solana killers that are up and coming, maybe Phantom is a Solana killer. Who knows? We'll be the first to find out. I'll let you know, because this space is just moving so fast. Whatever the plan is today, be prepared to pr change it for tomorrow, because we don't know what's coming. Uh, and that's what makes it so exciting. So we'll see. Scipio Azama, is it ever okay to liquidate crypto for down payment closing costs on our primary residence? I need to move out of my apartment and upsize you to family needs. Time frame one year. Of course. I always say, if you imagine your portfolio, break it into thirds. One third should be real estate. Everybody needs a castle. Most important thing, great inflation hedge, tax write-off, and you need somewhere nice to live. Remember, you live in your house, especially during these endemic times, all the time. So you got to make sure you have a nice place in which to live. You don't want to be stuck in a noisy apartment with young kids that are woken up by your neighbors or something. But you get so much peace of mind having your own castle. So absolutely, take your li liquidate your crypto, get your down payment and have it as a primary residence. 
Now, if you're speculating and investing, I think there's more money to be made holding it in crypto right now than buying your own, <laughs> buying a speculative property. So wait for like for multi-unit properties and things like that. Wait for a crash before you go in there. So that's my what I would do. Felipe, uh, staying up late to watch my favorite YouTuber. <laughs> Thanks for being here. What are your thoughts on Saber, Saber's future? Again, I looked at Saber. I looked at all of the ecosystem plays that are on the Solana ecosystem, and every single one has the same problems. Bad tokenomics, bad distribution, etc. I know they're all young and up and coming, but I couldn't find anything that was as low risk and with more upside than Solana. So I'm sticking with that and uh, didn't like Saber. The Super Trooper. 108. I am worried about the bear market and the extreme drops that might come. Can you make a video explaining your hedge positions? Yes, I will be doing that. And and don't be too worried. Again, this is a different cycle. Like we, we went through a 50, 50 or more, a 58% correction uh, already this summer. Bitcoin went from 64,800 to 28,900. So I expect maybe we get another 50, 55% correction if we have a big downturn, but that's nothing. But we have a long way to go up. So every, every, all this anxiety will kill you. Relax. Remember, if you are nervous and you've made some great gains, just take some off the table as you go up, you know, layer out 10% of the time, 5%. Take your initial investment all the time. And then you can just relax and not, not be concerned. So I used to do that uh, when I played craps at a casino. Um, if I made, I'd go to every table with 300 bucks. And as soon as I doubled it, I'd take my original 300, stick it in my pocket. And then I play really aggressively with the table's money. And sometimes I'd make $20,000 in a couple of hours. So remember when you don't have that anxiety and you're not worried, you make a much better investor. And that's a big lesson for today for everybody. If you are anxious, you make mistakes. So just do whatever you can to be relaxed about your investments and you'll do much better. Short Pants Romance, that's an interesting name. Got a YubiKey, heard you mention it. Yes, majority of my investments are in Coinbase and Coinbase Wallet. Should I do anything else? No, just make sure your Coinbase is connected to YubiKey. Make sure you're the only one that can get in there and you are good to go. Um, Try use one dedicated computer for all your investing and trading. Don't stick your YubiKey in multiple machines. Uh, Sometimes it can you know, remember it or remember your login. I think, I think it's the case with one of my exchanges, but that's it. Have a dedicated machine. Don't let anybody else use the machine. Don't have any, go to any weird websites with that machine. And that's the best thing you can do. And Mamba Ropes, I really love your show and have been following you for months. I'm thinking of adding Phantom in my bag. What do you think about Phantom? I'm liking it more and more every single day. I haven't pulled the trigger. I'm probably going to do a, should I buy a video on it? real soon and give you my conclusion. Um, but so far, so good. But it is riskier than other assets. So uh, <laughs> be very careful. And future millionaire, uh, I got you already. I got everybody, uh, I think. Hang on a second. Yes. Uh, oh, yes. Big thank you as well for your donations. Chris K, Jim Steck, Jeff Hammerberg, Tuna Toast, KS Trishel, Justice for All, Solid 184 and I Trust and Link at 28.8, adding some GBTC and MicroStrategy trading out of coin. Now to get rid of XRP and LTX stocks. Good job. Yeah. Clean up the bag. Just have top pedigrees in your bag as we go forward. You don't want to be holding garbage as we get into the riskier season. And there's still a lot more upside to go for a lot of good names out there. Heather, thank you. Minas Ali. Hi there. Randy Brown. I am very heavy in Sol right now. All of us in the Sol chat are hoping a spying under 200 will be in a few years, but you were buying ETH under 200. Could be. That's an interesting, actually, I was buying ETH under 200 in March, April, May, June, I think, 2020. So it's not even that long ago. It's uh, 15 months ago. That was crazy. But it's a crazy market. And they're going after a crazy market themselves. The whole DeFi space is huge. So we'll see. Joseph Pionti, Taune, playing with pastels, Catherine Muller. Hey, Josh, Moto JB, multi coiner with your help. <laughs> Big congratulations. Uh, we have somebody here who made some money on Shiba. Chatted yesterday and we said, get out of it, take your profit, 
buy a Bitcoin with it. Boom. So that's what you need to do. You can take some of your bag, throw it on the casino table. But if you get a hit, be disciplined. Don't hold on. If you make it 10x, take it off the table, stick it in a pristine asset. And as I say now, my new saying is, Bitcoin is my money market. Uh, <laughs> nice job. Uh, Yo, Nut Studio, Nibal, Tumanov, Chicken Wise, Millennium Falcon. I think that's a Star Wars thing, isn't it? Uh, Nabal Tomanoff, Hien Win, Crypto AI, German Girl in Virginia, Kim B, Citizen Jewel Sport, HGW, Dragonfire, and good night, everybody. Before I wrap, though, Matic is still doing well. Ethereum, still 4270. Saul, under 200. That's going to change soon. And Cardano, under two bucks. Yeah. Bitcoin is extremely volatile. It's people playing games, but just... Uh, be patient. Have those limit orders in as well. Make them low and score. See you guys.